Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks and my name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Now, this recording is going to be a bit different from previous ones. So I kind of have a little, yeah, not a warning, but just to let you know at the start, just in case you might not want to listen to it. I'm going to discuss um, an event that happened this week, uh, a few days ago, where when my anxiety was very high, and I'm kind of going to discuss why what I didn't do that I could have done. I didn't cope with it very well so it's it it's kind of the opposite in some ways to what I talk about normally but at the same time um, showing that I'm just a human being like yourself and that I actually although I've got it under control a lot of the time um occasionally I get really affected by the anxiety. So I thought I'd talk about this. So again, if this is triggering in any way, or if it's something you just don't want to hear, or if it's not something you won't find useful, perhaps, then I understand and just click the off button. And I'm going to explore what I could have done. Uh, and I've been thinking about it for a few days. This happened on Tuesday and it's now Friday. So, and a few things I'm going to be mentioning. Uh, a few thoughts about mental health and anxiety. And people's perception of it. Especially professional people uh, you know those in the mental health sector perhaps as well as people that are there to help that, that have maybe no knowledge of mental health but are still helping people with mental health issues so uh, for example Citizens Advice Bureau or maybe charities that help with homeless people or um, support workers that just generally you know help anyone that you know kind of general support worker so I'm just kind of thinking it would be useful for those people to have uh, a bit more knowledge but then it's you know it's such a an individual thing but anyway so um, I'll just start from the start and as I said it's not it's not really any therapy or hypnosis but it is a might be useful to somebody and I've really thought about whether or not to make this recording because um, I don't want to seem like I'm just coming on here to have a moan because that's not uh, what I intend to do Um, I kind of want to have a moan if I'm honest 
uh, I want to moan, have a good old moan about it, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'll give some of the facts and I'll tell you how I was feeling. So, and then it's something you may relate to. It's involving benefits, it's involving the PIP, PIP, Personal Independence Payments, for those of you in England that may be dealing with that. Again, so that's, I'm only going to come from my perspective. Uh, um, so there you go, so that's what I'm going to be talking about in the next half an hour or however long. I say half an hour, but if you've listened to me before, I do have a tendency of talking forever and ever. So here's a, here's the beginning of the story. Three weeks ago, I received a letter from the PIP, which is the benefit agency place, uh, with a form telling me that I needed to do a change of circumstances form, fill it in and have it in by the, uh, I don't know, 14th, no, 12th of uh, September, which was yesterday. And so I've had a few weeks to kind of, it wasn't even three, it was the end of August, so it wasn't even three weeks ago, probably two weeks ago. And I went to the Citizen Advice Bureau, because I got this form on a Saturday, the Monday I went to the Citizen Advice. Uh, and for those that don't know what it is, it's basically, it's a, it's a charity that do get funded by the government, and they you can go there with any most issues, uh, whether it's legal, whether it's you know whatever it is, benefits, uh, and they they're kind of an advocate, and they can help to fill forms in, and they can help to signpost, put you in touch with someone else that can help. So I've been I've used them quite a few times since I was probably seventeen over so over the years, and they're they're really good. It's a really brilliant service to have, and it's free um, to use. So I made the appointment. And when I went in there, first of all, they said, oh, we don't make appointments anymore. I said, but this is for the PIP form to be filled in. I, I had an appointment last time, two years ago. And she said, oh, yeah, we do make appointments for the PIP form. Which, again, is, I think it's, <laughs> I'm trying not to criticise them, but I'm going to. Because their first response to can I make an appointment is no. You have to come in in the morning. Not asking what the appointment's for, not asking, not giving the person an opportunity to say, I just happen to be quite forceful in a sense of um, telling them that I wanted an appointment and the reason I wanted it because I knew I couldn't just turn up in the morning and expect someone to spend two hours with me filling a form in. Uh, so, and I saw them on this Tuesday say the same thing to somebody else. They came in and said, can I make an appointment please? No, you have to come in in the morning at nine o'clock or 9.30. So that person might have had a form, so they would have come in, and then be told, "Oh, you have to make you have to make an appointment for you." So yeah, it's, I think some of the ways they're operating is not great, but again, that's just me being critical. So Andre's just appeared out of nowhere. 
So I go in there, okay, I go in and I know I've got the appointment. So this is time for me on reflection to prepare myself mentally for going in there because I filled in forms before with them. The last one was two years ago and I filled in a couple of other forms at different places as well uh, for benefits and it's it's not something that I enjoy doing. I can't imagine anyone like loves doing it but it's something that uh, raises my anxiety level very very high um, indeed very so I knew I knew to prepare yet I didn't prepare not in the way that would have been more useful to me excuse the background sounds as Andre climbing through his little tube he's uh Oh, he's just doing his thing. So I thought I'd relax the weekend. I'd relax. And not really think about it. But I was thinking about it. It was almost like underneath I was thinking about it without consciously thinking about it. Which is a weird, kind of a weird thing. And the Monday, my friend asked me if I'd look after his dog on the Monday. And I said yes. I should have said no because I needed the day to prepare for the Tuesday I needed to get myself ready but I didn't think of myself didn't put myself first and this is a form that I fill in every two years it's not like it's a regular thing so I ended up getting pretty much no sleep because I knew I needed to be up in the morning in order to have the dog and then he didn't end up he didn't end up getting up so I didn't, I didn't end up having the dog so I was waiting around for hours and technically that's got nothing to do with Tuesday I didn't spend the day doing what I could have been doing and that's preparing I don't mean spending all day meditating or anything like that but just maybe being a bit nice to myself maybe being a bit trying to get a bit more relaxed uh, rehearsing the day ahead imagining you know waking up feeling relaxed feeling positive feeling calm rehearsing getting on the bus going into the to the you know to the place I was going sitting down going through the process of filling in the form with the lady that I was with and feeling relaxed throughout that situation and it lasted for about three hours the, the form of filling and I didn't realise it was going to take that long and I just I didn't use the time before in a constructive way in a preparatory if that's the right word way so that's what I'm thinking now in hindsight I know um, 
people say about hindsight and stuff, but it's useful for future learning. So what I could have done on the bus traveling to town on that Tuesday morning, again is feel relaxed, get myself calm and rehearse in my mind. Going through the whole experience and then rewinding back to sitting on the bus and go through that, maybe even in quick motion and do that a few times because that would have taken away the anxiety of the thought of doing it because I would have separated myself from it it's it's kind of a, a phobia uh, technique I could have I could have imagined myself sitting there in a clown outfit or imagined whoever was sitting there doing it for me um, wearing roller skates and a big disco costume with flashing lights I mean I could have anything to have taken the edge off of that anxiety that I was feeling But I'll be honest, the journey there wasn't feeling the anxiety or I wasn't as aware of it. It was almost like I was uh, separate from, separated from how I was really feeling. Uh, almost like I was pushing it away, didn't want to experience it, didn't want to feel it. Why would anybody want to feel it? Why would anybody want to experience an uncomfortable feeling? But by pushing it away, it makes it stronger. So that's, you know, not useful. In an emergency situation, of course, it's very useful. You know, you need to get on and do what you need to do and then allow yourself to feel it afterwards. But this wasn't an emergency situation. I was sitting on a bus, traveling there. And the feeling I had really at that time was dread. As I was walking towards the place, it was more, oh, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. And I knew I had to do it get the form filled and send it off, go to the post office, pay for it to be delivered. And I needed to do it today, you know, on that Tuesday. It all needed to be done. And on top of that, I had three other letters from two different people that I was posting as well. So again, I took on other people's stuff by choice when I should have said, perhaps no or shouldn't have done that maybe not shouldn't have but maybe perhaps should have been a bit selfish uh, for that day because last week I decided that this coming week was going to be all about the pit form which possibly wasn't a good idea really because maybe I built it up a bit too much gave it too much energy, too much power over me but the and then other people ask me to do things and I generally say yes So that, that's a separate thing that perhaps I need to look at. But you may be in a similar situation where you really need to focus on yourself. Now Andre's now trying to rip the 
soundproofing off the wall which is kind of ironic really because I've got soundproof in there to stop background sounds yet yeah, i got a ferret making background sounds by trying to rip the soundproofing off the wall which is there to stop background sounds it's a bit of a, a weird irony there so my anxiety levels were just growing as I walked into the place but I was I was holding it together I thought the most important thing is to be friendly to the people that I meet is they're helping me out so I go in there hi I got in there early and it was five past one the appointment was half past one So I got seen that the lady came out at half past one and she said took me into the room. So yeah, the lady came in, took me into her room. The first thing she said to me was it's been a terrible day and you should have made the appointment for earlier one o'clock or something because it's going to take ages to do this and I don't like travelling home in the dark oh, well, well, she, I didn't hear it, listen to everything she said and I said to her well I was here at five past one yeah well I was having my sandwich then <laughs> I kind of realised then that whatever I said she was going to backtrack, contradict herself and just so I thought, no, she's helping me. God, just my anxiety was raising; it was increasing. And I almost felt um, naked in the sense of I didn't have any protection. And I've got techniques; I've got different things I can use. And have used for years and years since you know, well, for stress and stuff since the late nineties. So I've been using uh, ways of uh, dealing with something in the moment. But this was new because, although the fill in the form in I've done before, I hadn't done it with someone that was uh, that awkward who's making it I need I know it might sound weird but I almost needed someone to be really gentle with me that's how I felt I felt so vulnerable um, for a variety of reasons uh, one was because of the anxiety another one because of the financial aspect because it's this form is so important and if it's not done correctly I could lose £220 a month which is going to leave me you know, in trouble and also I know that some of the questions on there are very very personal things about hygiene thing, you know just and I didn't feel comfortable, and I, I wouldn't feel comfortable discussing that level, that detailed level of uh, those subjects with anybody. But it was, I think it would have been easier had the person been really gentle with me. So, By the way, that's my big black squeaky chair that's squeaking in the background. So we went, uh, there was, the anxiety accelerated and then I almost went into a panicky feeling because they didn't have the previous form from two years ago, which is what I needed 
uh, in order to help me to fill the form in and they said it was archived and they couldn't get it back and the person that archives it's on holiday and, and there was a point where I nearly walked out partly because I needed to I could feel um, an anxiety attack coming on it was it hadn't happened yet and it didn't happen but I felt like it might and I was in the fight or flight situation and I definitely couldn't fight because I was a little bit worried what I might say and in the end you know I kind of didn't literally have to bite my tongue but I really had to hold my keep it in uh, because this various different levels of rudeness happened a little bit throughout and sometimes it was it kind of in, it improved as it got obviously got further on as in she was a bit more gentle and as long as I just answered the questions and was, did what I was told and As the time went on, unfortunately, due to being in that at that level of anxiety for such a long period of time, and it was nearly three hours, I just found myself drained. I was drain. It was draining me so much, and I just wanted to kind of climb under the under the table and just go to sleep and just you know and I haven't felt that way for a, quite a long time probably the last time I felt that that level was when I was working before I got um, really ill a few years ago um, I've been ill a few times but this was a job I had and I ended up uh, losing a job over it but uh, that's kind of at the level I was at but I kept going because I knew how important it was and it all it felt like a marathon I've never done a marathon physically I wouldn't be able to do that uh, without a lot of training but mentally I felt exhausted And after the event, I thought, well, what could I have done to prepare myself for the exhaustion? And I suppose it's breaking up how much of the exhaustion was because of the anxiety and the, the toll it was taking on my body and on my mental uh, health at that time how much of it was just through the um, <sighs> tediousness or repetitiveness or the just the unpleasant experience of spending three hours filling a form in I imagine even the most well-adjusted, completely wonderfully healthy in every aspect person, if there is such a person, would possibly have found it draining. So then it's kind of trying to judge, like, oh, how much of this... Do I need to know how much of it is anxiety and how much of it is just natural? But then, it's all natural, isn't it? Because I'm a human being. And that's something that 
perhaps we all need to remind ourselves of. We are still just humans. And if we're dealing with anxiety at times, it doesn't make us any less human. Some could argue it makes us more human because we're in touch with how we're feeling. I mean, last week, a friend of mine that I haven't seen for a couple of years, he told me that he'd been diagnosed with bipolar and wanted to kind of pick my brain because of I've got bipolar. And, and he wasn't so much asking for advice, but I decided to give him one bit of advice because he was talking about how he was feeling and uh, how he kind of felt different. And I, and I said to him, just reminded him that I said to him, you know what? You're still the same person you were before you got diagnosed. That person that walked into that office, that doctor's surgery, or you know the uh, the psychiatrist or whatever, before your diagnosis and after your diagnosis, you're still the same person. You've not you're not a different person now. It's still you. You got this condition, this illness, whatever you want to label it, but you're still you. And I had a similar thing. It's suddenly this diagnosis, and I was seeing myself differently, perceiving myself differently. When I had the panic, uh, started really bad in 2002, uh, November. I thought my brain was damaged. Like there was something really wrong with me. Did I have a, uh, you know, some kind of brain, uh, not injury, but you know, maybe a, a blood clot or brain cancer or, you know, my brain I went all over the place. Was I going crazy? That's how I felt at the time. And so that, I think it's important to remember that we're just human. And these are feelings. And the reason we feel is because we're human. And of course, it, we want to change those feelings. But at the same time, try not to give yourself, I'm going to try not to give myself too much of a hard time because technically I didn't practice what I preach. And I like to think I don't preach anything. I'm not a preacher. But, or didn't follow my own advice. I didn't think I needed to. Is that cocky? It's probably quite cocky of me. Maybe arrogant even, I don't know. I just honestly didn't realize that my reaction was going to be so strong when I was in that office going through that process of the form filling. It did not prepare for that. In fact, if I'd known it was going to be like that, you know, beforehand, I would have cancelled and rearranged it for a different day or maybe arranged for someone else to go with me, you know, or ask for someone else to do the form. Um, although it was very thorough, the way it was done, and... And then when I get back, now afterwards I'm thinking, is it, am I just wanting to put the blame onto someone else for how I was feeling? Because this lady was doing this, she's helping me. And she, I think she liked me at the end, we were getting on quite well at the end. 
and it's a relief I think just that it was finished we were both relieved and but maybe I kind of got in touch with that again another human a natural human uh, behaviour which is to feel the need to blame somebody which is never helpful especially not ourselves so I just I sat there did the three hours then I had to go well I didn't have to but I kind of did I needed to go and get the letters posted and the person in the post office was miserable <laughs> so it was like oh and I don't know how much of that was me my energy was maybe having an effect on the people that I was around that I was talking to um, when I got home eventually I waited about half an hour for a bus and I, I could struggle to walk from the bus stop to where I lived and I thought in my head all I've got to do is get back I'll have some hot cross buns or some tea cakes toasted tea cakes I have a can of coke I'll chill out I'll just watch a bit of telly sit in my chair and just I'll be fine I'll just wind down I was wrong I had the tea cakes I opened a can of coke and I felt uh, the stress levels were still really 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 high really high and I was I couldn't understand because I was out of the situation now usually these days it's almost like letting the air out of a balloon really slowly it just it just releases but I couldn't function and again I'm uh not embarrassed to say this because uh, some of this I've mentioned before I've got my diagnosis is bipolar affective disorder with uh, unstable personality um, or and pers unstable personality disorder traits so how much of that is to do with that condition you know blah 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 but I, I could not function could not function and I suppose part of what I'm saying is that's okay it's kind of okay uh, because that is just the reality at the time it didn't last for a long time and my only thing that I could do or well, the only thing I wanted to do was to go and lay down which is what I did I lay down I think I had a headache as well which wasn't surprising really with the tension and I'd just eaten because I, di I didn't know I was going to be laying down so I felt physically uncomfortable but I couldn't get out of bed I just I was just there it was like a magnet you know st sticking me to the bed and this was at half six in the afternoon or in the evening and I did fall asleep and at 9.30 I woke up and I felt so much better so much more relaxed than I was before 
and so from that angle at the end of it I did what I needed to do I needed to lay down and go to sleep which is something that I know works for me when it comes to uh, now that these days didn't always work for me but I've always found with anxiety, stress uh, or really low moods sometimes going to bed is the only thing that helps is just sleep through it but again that's a personal thing we've all got our own different ways some people may find going to the gym would be more useful some people may find talking to a friend or a family member or just ha having a cuddle you know with your kids or um, who, whatever it is spending time with a loved one some people might find watching television or a movie would be a good way to wind down or have a bath for me it was I just needed I basically just collapsed into bed and it, I say collapsed it wasn't quite that dramatic I didn't swoon and just faint onto the bed I just lay down there was no drama involved no violins required so that part I'm okay with in a sense of I've had to do that many times but what could I have done to prepare for the actual anxiety that I experienced because I did say that I didn't expect it to be that bad but I did expect to feel anxious I expected it yet I did nothing to prepare and I'm not sure why I do actually I think I do know why um, I didn't give myself time to prepare I woke up late I ended up running for the bus and I didn't give myself time to prepare I didn't give myself space to do things slowly preparing for it as in having a slow bath having eat my breakfast slowly having a cup of coffee perhaps a cup of coffee wasn't a good idea um, in fact I'm not even sure if I had one but perhaps I could have taken an extra hour or two took a slow walk to the bus state stop and then on a journey on the bus rehearsed it rehearsed what was going to happen made it a bit silly a bit humorous got in touch with feelings of positivity and gratitude focusing on what maybe foc focusing on it being a really positive experience because I don't know how much of what I brought to the table affected the interactions I'll be honest I don't know I don't know if my anxiety when I met the lady affected the way that she dealt with me and it may well have done and her anxiety 
or her stress for the difficult day that she told me she'd had increased or affected my anxiety, affected, uh, triggered me to be even more. So I guess really, I suppose in a sense, what I've got out of this is to say that it's okay to have a bad day. It's okay. Because in the past, I might have took that as a defeat. I might have taken that as a as a, a signal to quit or to, as a you know I might have thought about it afterwards and thought well all this stuff that I'm doing this relaxation uh, this things I've studied that's just a pointless and I'll give up I could, I could have taken it like that and talk to myself in that negative way but I haven't done that I've not I've not been saying oh well done to myself apart from the not walking out bit I'm pleased with myself for not walking out I'm pleased with myself for sticking there for not you know for getting through it And I'm trying not to be too critical towards myself for my lack of preparation. So I guess it's okay to have a bad day. It doesn't mean that every other day is going to be bad. It doesn't mean that you got to give up on having good days because that would be that'd be cruel wouldn't it be a cruel thing to do to yourself so I suppose it's finding the positives in it uh, in the situation and also uh exploring ideas and possibilities um, of what I could have done and perhaps how I will deal with a similar situation in the future. So it's taking something, learning something from this experience because I'll be honest it took me by surprise it really did I knew it was I, that's the thing I, in my mind I knew it was going to be difficult so I already had that negativity in my mind before I even got there instead of expecting it to be okay expecting it to go well because if I'd have been travelling on the bus expecting it to go well I would have arrived there with a much more a positive attitude a lot calmer, a lot more relaxed. And the likelihood is I would have dealt with it with a lot more calmness. So 
so it's almost like I chose to feel the way I felt. And I know in the past I would have said, I would have definitely would have said I had no, I had no control over the situation, and uh, I feel this way because I feel this way, and it's nothing to do with me. And when actually we all affect our own emotions and how we feel. It's not about taking blame. It's about making changes. If I'd have expected the process to go smoothly and easily and to feel relaxed and calm throughout the whole situation, I'd have got there, I'd have been calm on the bus, I possibly would have been a lot more positive and friendlier to the lady that I saw, which meant that she may have been friendlier to me in response and the three hours perhaps would have been a more relaxing experience than it was. And if I'd have got home and felt drained and have to sleep for three hours, that wouldn't, I wouldn't be bothered by that. It was how I felt during that affected me, affected me the most, the anxiety levels during the process. Because at the end, when I got home, it was more as if I'd just been drained of every bit of energy that I had. Like I'd run out of petrol or diesel, whatever you use to keep your car going, coal maybe. So it's okay to have a bad day. I think is my thought, my outcome for this. Because I don't want to blame myself. I am willing to take responsibility. Without blame. Uh, without criticism, without putting myself down, without calling myself names, without telling myself that, oh, I'll just, it's a backward step, or something I was saying to myself on the day, especially in the evening, how can I make recordings helping people with anxiety and panic attacks when I've just had one of the most anxious moments for a long time and didn't really feel like I dealt with it particularly well. How can I and then I thought maybe transparency I'll tell you, I'll tell, I'll talk about what happened and I know this, this podcast is it's really becoming quite popular, it's 
growing in popularity and uh, I hope that those that do listen are benefiting and I just felt that it was important to show my own vulnerability because anxiety and stress as well as feeling wonderful and elated or feeling angry or feeling sad bereavement uh, excitement just being a human being I think as Freud Freud said, Sigmund Freud, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. So sometimes feelings of anxiety is perfectly natural. Doesn't mean it's going anywhere. Doesn't mean it's a relapse. Doesn't mean it's going to lead to uh, you know, a full-blown panic attack. Doesn't mean necessarily anything what it might mean is be what it always does mean actually not might what it always means is be kind to yourself whatever that entails notice how you're feeling and do something about it Now, if I was back doing that thing again on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, I probably should have gone to the toilet or just said I need a couple of minutes air and gone outside and got a bit of air, had a glass of water or something like that. So I didn't, I did, I did nothing to help myself. Again. I'm trying not to say that in a critical way. So I was not being kind to myself, which is something for me to learn from without being cruel to myself and putting myself down like, no, 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 you didn't do what you tell other people to do. You didn't, you know, you didn't do with the anxiety. It's, it's okay to have a bad day. Just like it's okay to have a brilliant day. And I, I wish you a brilliant day today. And I'm going to end it here. So... For those of you that listened to, oh, blimey, I've been talking for nearly an hour. For those of you that have been listening, thank you. Um, I almost feel like I should just give this a title and put it in the self-development podcast. Um it might be useful for other people but that don't know about this podcast but I probably won't I hope this has been of use and I'll speak to you very soon just remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love Bye.